Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. From websites and online stores, Squarespace is the all in one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hello friends, I hope that you've been well, as you may have guessed from the title and thumbnail. Today's video, I am going to be recreating a screenshot from the film Princess Mononoke, which is directed by Miyazaki from Studio Ghibli. So here you can see I am starting out with the sketch. I am using a red coal erase colored pencil. I prefer to use these as my sketching utensil because I find it melds better with the painting medium as opposed to graphite, which I find smudges a lot. And I am using the B paper watercolor sketchbook, which is really hard to come by. So I do apologize, but I'm really close to finishing this sketchbook. So that's why I am using it here because I, I really want to finish it anyway. So I am apologizing in advance that the sketch is very light. I generally sketch quite light because I do a lot of erasing and I don't want to ruin the surface of the paper. And I also want to make sure that my sketching lines aren't too dark in case I have to redraw an area, which happens quite often. But after I kind of do this first pass with the erasable color pencil, I switch over to my Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil, which is an oil-based color pencil. This one is not erasable and because it's oil-based, it is water resistant, which is perfect when you are using wet media on top of it. And I personally prefer to sketch digitally if it's going to be a more involved illustration but for something like this where it's just meant to be pretty casual or just like a study I find that it's just it's okay for me to just sketch directly in the sketchbook and of course it allows all of you to see a little bit more of the sketching process and if you are new to my channel or haven't seen one of my screen cap redraw videos before. Basically, I talk a little bit about the art process, but I do spend a majority of the video just actually talking about the piece of media itself. So if you don't really like podcasty videos, this is probably not going to be for you. But before we actually get to the painting, I just want to talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Squarespace by now. I really love having it because I'm able to have a gallery to showcase all of my best work. I'm also able to have a link to my shop and I can also have like a frequently asked questions page and about page as well. Right now, I have been wanting to add a new page to my website where I show off my sketchbook pages. And so you can see here, I'm very quickly creating a new page. And the thing that I really love about Squarespace is that you can actually edit the photos directly on the platform. So this makes things so much quicker. I don't have to bring it into Photoshop or a photo editing software to edit the photo. So I can just do it right here on the spot. And it just really makes the process so much more streamlined and I'm able to update my website so much easier and it's just much less of a hassle because it's so intuitive. So whether you need a website to host your gallery, your online shop, or any other really creative endeavor, I highly recommend checking out Squarespace. So if you head over to squarespace.com, you'll get a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash I'm a wonder for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now finally on to the actual fun part, which is painting. So today I am using the Kuratake Gansai Tambi watercolor palette, which by the way, all of the art supplies I'm using will be listed in the description down below as always. And here I decided to show a little bit of the actual color mixing here. It's something that I get a lot of questions about. And that little bottle that I just put into the paint there, it's just plain old tap water in a plastic bottle. And here I'm swatching out the colors, which I always recommend to have a little swatch sheet next to you when you're painting. That way you can see and test out the colors before you commit it to the actual paint, uh, the actual painting. And yeah, I always tend to start out with the skin first. And my kind of approach to skin tones is honestly pretty simple in my opinion. As you would have seen, I basically just used yellow and like a reddish orange color. 
and I just had two different mixtures of it, one having slightly more red than the other and kind of just go back and forth between those two mixtures. And if you are curious about a more in-depth look or hearing about my approach to painting portraits with watercolors or skin tone specifically, I do have two YouTube videos on my Patreon channel, which I kind of do a live painting and narration of me painting two different portraits. And that I think provides a lot of insight into my thought process and my mixing and all of that in more detail. So if you join my Patreon page in the $5 tier or higher, you get access to these videos as well as the entire catalog of all of the exclusive videos I've done on my Patreon page, which has been about two years now. So there's lots of content on there if you are interested. And if you are unable to support me on Patreon, that is totally fair. I have lots of other watercolor portrait videos on my YouTube channel that are available for everybody. So I'll have those linked in the description as well. But yeah, I really actually love this paper because I find that it's the, the paint, it sits and soaks into the paper really well, which is, I guess, good and bad. The good thing is that it makes it really great for layering because it doesn't lift, but it is also bad because of that in terms of it's not as forgiving because it doesn't lift very well. So if you make a mistake, you really kind of have to just deal with it because the ability to do lifting techniques with this paper is not that great. So it's just one of those things that reminds me of why I often tell people to do a lot of research and reviewing before they really just listen to my, my personal recommendations. I get a lot of people asking me about, you know, what's the best paper and what's the best watercolors. And the thing is, everyone has a different approach to their work. Everyone has different preferences. So for me, I just like to describe what I use and my approach as much as possible to help all of you make an informed decision. That being said, this paper, unfortunately, is actually really hard to find these days. Um, like I had said at the beginning, I typically I, I try not to use mediums that are not very accessible to you because I know a lot of people will want to purchase them, but I'm so close to finishing the sketchbook. So I'm just, I'm going to power through and finish it out and move on to a different sketchbook later. But anyway, that was a long tangent. Um, I am working on the screen cap here. So that's the reference point that we've got. I was torn between this screen cap and this one. If you follow me closely on Instagram, you would have seen that I actually made a poll on my Instagram stories asking for my audience's opinion on which screen cap they'd rather see. I had a feeling that the one that I am painting here was going to be the winner. And the reason why I was drawn to the other one was because of the nighttime lighting. That kind of color scheme is not something that I paint very often. So I felt like it would have been a really good challenge and a really great place to practice getting those types of very cool nighttime tones. But I do recognize that this screen cap, the one that I am working on here, which was the winner of the poll, is a much more iconic scene of this character and also is a little bit more interesting because there's just more going on in the actual screen cap. So while I was pretty intrigued by the other one because of its color scheme, I'm definitely not mad at ultimately doing this particular scene because I do think that the blood was a really fun thing to, to do, especially with watercolors because it is a fluid medium. And of course, this screenshot, I think, is just a much more indicative scene of this character because she has that really fierce look on her on her face that expression is always something that I love drawing I love drawing like angry pouty expressions and I obviously want to 
represent her in her in all of her badass glory. So this screenshot, while the color scheme is maybe not as interesting, what the actual content of the screen cap is more interesting. So the thing that I wanted to try and do to just give a little bit more interest or just to challenge myself a little more, I went into this screenshot thinking that I wanted to give it a slightly warmer lighting situation since it was a daytime scene and I am using watercolor. So I figure why not take uh, the medium to its fullest potential and take advantage of, you know, creating gradients with um, the different tones. So you can see for the the wolf's fur, I had started out with like a pale yellow. And then for the fur that San is wearing, I used a light pale blue to try and differentiate the two furs from each other. And initially, like kind of around this stage, I feel like I had a good handle on, on what was going on. And then as the painting progresses, I think I kind of for had forgotten my intention of this like super warm tone uh, color scheme. And then I ended up going really, really ham on the purple tones. And spoiler alert, I actually don't love how this painting turned out in the end, which is such a shame because I don't know what it is. I find so I've obviously been a fan of this film for a very long time, and I have actually drawn and painted San a number of times over the years. And for whatever reason, every time I do, I'm never satisfied with the results. And this time was no exception. I feel like I am low key cursed. And uh, for some reason, I just can never be happy with my interpretation of this character that I love so much. So I don't know, I, I'm gonna try again one of these days, but unfortunately, yeah, I just really was not happy with the result of this painting. But regardless, I still wanted to show you because I filmed the entire process anyways. And um, I don't know, maybe it's also just a lesson for all of us that while we might not always love the result of something that we've worked on and while yes it is disheartening when that happens because you know you have high hopes for it and you spend time on it but ultimately you're still putting in the work you're still putting in those hours for practice and you're still you should still feel accomplished and be proud of yourself for sticking something out and for making something in the first place. And that is what I am reminding myself of when I look at this finished result. <laughs> and yeah, I think that I've been really struggling with my artistic identity and my confidence in my art for quite a while now. Um, my friend Chris Hong, if you don't already know who she is, she's a great artist here on YouTube and on Instagram, and she just finally made a return to YouTube. So if you haven't checked out her new video yet, you should. But yeah, she said something, she had expressed that she felt like she had regressed um, in her artistic ability. And that really resonated with me because I have also been feeling the same way. Um, oftentimes during like my live streams or Q and A sessions, people ask me, you know, what my favorite art piece that I've made is or something that I'm personally proud of. And all of the work that I personally enjoy or am proud of, of my own work, is dated back from like 2019 and so we are now in 2022 and <laughs> yeah I don't know I think I've I've really been feeling like I've been running on fumes for the past couple of years I never seem to feel like I have enough time to really execute anything I feel like I'm always just chasing deadlines and I'm running out of time and I'm always rushing and that really, you know, changes the way you make work and the approach that you have and your relationship that you have with your artwork. But I think that hopefully in just recognizing this, um, I can figure out, you know, where to go from here. I think people always ask me, you know, what do you do when you have an art block? And 
one of the things that I do recommend is studies. And whether it be studies from, from life, from photos, from screen caps, um, I do think that doing studies like this really helps give you a space to explore different techniques without having to use as much brain power that you would if you were doing something completely original. Because when you're doing an original illustration, that just adds another whole another layer to it when you actually have to think of the concept and the composition and the colors. So when doing studies like this, you're able to turn off some of that kind of brain power because the composition and the color is already kind of laid out for you. And from here, you can focus in a little bit more on whether it is like practicing te technique that you're using or the medium or um, just learning something new from the, the screenshot or the study, the reference that you're using. And so for me, I think with this particular screenshot recreation, I think that I just needed to maybe stick to my guns a little bit more with uh, the original plan that I had in mind with the kind of warm color palette and I just sort of forgot, I guess. I don't know. I think also I felt like I was really rushing to, to get this done because I needed the video out and, you know, that kind of thing. But regardless, I will probably return to Princess Mononoke, whether it be a screenshot recreation or just fan art in general because I really feel like I want to do this character in this film justice in some way because it is a film that I really really love. I don't know if it's actually my favorite Studio Ghibli film. This is a question that I get asked often and it's very hard to choose because there's so many amazing films and they all a lot of them do hold a special place in my heart for different reasons but yeah with Princess Mononoke I have an interesting story with it. So when I was younger, my my initial Studio Ghibli films were My Neighbor Totoro and Kiki's Delivery Service. I absolutely loved both of them. We owned My Neighbor Totoro on VHS and I watched it constantly. And then with Kiki's Delivery Service, I remember I rented it because I'm that age and uh, we, we rented it and I was obsessed with it. But you know, I was really, really young and I wasn't aware of anime as a genre or even that Studio Ghibli, like they were, they were from the same studio specifically. I just knew that I liked it. And I got a little older, I think it was about 11 or 12 and Princess Mononoke was on TV. And I didn't, again, didn't really know much about Studio Ghibli, but when the film started, it's it has the you know the Totoro screen uh the, that blue screen that comes up the title screen with Totoro on it and then so in my mind I'm like oh my neighbor Totoro I was like so this is the same the same you know company and I thought it's gonna be light and fun and of course if you've seen this film <laughs> you'll know that it is nothing like my neighbor Totoro and the kind of opening sequence is kind of violent <laughs> there's you know arrows flying and people are getting decapitated and hands are flying off and um it's pretty a pretty intense kind of opening scene for a movie um that you know for a studio that my brain assumed was only for young children but i couldn't look away i was so fascinated and um, you know, obviously the animation is incredible and I was a little older at this point, so I was able to sit down and watch it and it just, I think that it really changed the way that I viewed animation because up until that point, I think that the impression of animation was that it was either for children or that it was something like The Simpsons or Family Guy, where it was sort of just comedic. But Princess Mononoke really dives into a lot of adult themes. Um, and it has a lot to say, um, it has a lot of commentary. And that's something that I think a lot of people don't realize about animation um, if they're, you know, a bit more if they're older and they only consume live action or, 
you know, adult TV shows like The Simpsons or Futurama or something, which there's nothing wrong with that kind of animation and that kind of media. I love that stuff too. But I think that a lot of people just forget or just don't realize that animation as a medium really does lend itself and can be used in in a way that feels really grounded and mature. And that's something that I think Princess Mononoke does so well. And what I love about this film and what I love about a lot of Miyazaki's films is that the antagonists are not always so black and white. It's not so um, like the villain is evil, period. Um, I think that there's a lot of morally gray characters and you can kind of see where all these different characters are coming from, which I think is really, really interesting. And as well, the film deals with themes of the environment and greed and humanity. And above all else, it is also just a beautiful film. The character designs, the scenery, the music as well, everything about it is just impeccable. So I highly, highly recommend it if you somehow made it this far into the video and you've never seen this this movie before. But yeah, I apologize that I think I spent a little bit more time talking about my art block journey versus the actual film itself. But regardless, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you do like this type of video and you haven't seen my previous screen cap redraws, I've drawn Howl from Howl's Moving Castle. I've done Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service. Um, I've also done, you know, things from live action films as well. I've done Batman Returns and I've done even a music video screenshot. So I'll have a playlist linked in the description if this is a type of video that you're interested in. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything from me. I hope that you all have an amazing day or evening wherever you're at. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments what your favorite Studio Ghibli film is. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.